In this problem, we have a cylindrical tank that is open at the top and filled with water. We want to find the time that will take for it to drain completely, assuming an ideal fluid. We will be referring to the top of the tank as point 1 and has an area 1 and height 1. We will also be defining point 2 as the point where the fluid is leaving the tank and this has an area 2 and a height 2 tied to it. I've listed all the values for the diameters and heights we will be working with on this slide. How do we go about solving this one? Well, recall from the piston displacing water video that the Q or flow rate is conserved. So the same volume that the tank is lowering by is the same volume leaving the tank. This means we can take area 1 times velocity 1 and set it equal to area 2 times velocity 2. Cross-sectional area times the velocity of the fluid through that cross-sectional area is the flow rate at that point. Recall from the Torcelli's Law video that the velocity of the water coming out of the bottom of the tank is the same as a free-falling water droplet that is dropped from the water line of the tank. This is under ideal circumstances. So the equation for velocity 2, which velocity 2 is the velocity of the water going through the hole in the bottom of the tank, is the square root of 2 times gravity times the height from the water line to the hole in the bottom. I'll be notating the square roots as a raised to the 1 half power, which is equivalent to a square root. Now we need to define velocity 1, or the rate at which the fluid in the tank lowers over time. This is really just the delta in height, or change in height, divided by the delta of time, or the change in time. The change in displacement over the change in time is the definition of velocity. We can now plug in dh over dt into the equation where velocity once was. For our next step, we need to use algebra to get everything to one side except for dh over dt. Then we will group all of the values that remain constant and set that equal to the constant k. Then replace all of those values with the letter k in the original equation. We get dh over dt is equal to k times the square root of the height of the water in the tank at initial condition. Next we will multiply both sides by the change in time, then divide both sides by the square root of height. We do this because we want to have the change in height grouped with the height value. Now we can integrate both sides of the equation with respect to the variable that is changing on either side. Recall that raising something to the negative power is the same as dividing by that value to that power. I did this to height. We use a combination of the power rule and the constant rule, which for your reference are listed on this slide. We are left with 2 times the square root of h being equal to k times t plus c, which is c being the constant we add in integration. Our constant in this case will be a 0. Now if we divide both sides by k, we get the equation for time for the fluid to drain from the tank. We can now plug in what our k constant value is equal to, and plug in all of our values that I listed at the beginning of the problem. We get a time of 1,075 seconds, which equals 17.9 minutes to drain the tank. Keep in mind this is an ideal example, so in reality it will probably drain slower. Here is a video tally for the closed poll that I put on my community tab. This adds one more video to applied calculus. That concludes this video. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.